you know, you don't always have to uh, fail in order to learn. You can just observe other people's failures. <laughs> and for that, I'm going to be the perfect example for you. My story is going to be the story for you that you can learn from. Meaning that the whole proposal just wasn't coming together according to my desired timeline. Meaning that I got... <laughs> I got the ugliest ring possible. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. Meaning that things happened and then, you know, I had the chance to get the ring that I wanted, but by then we were not able to afford the rings. Um, meaning that um, during the whole process and me being frustrated and anxious and stuff, uh, asking for a sign from the universe, the sign that I got was a very aggressive sign. It was a clear yes or no, but it, it came in a very aggressive way, meaning I ended up in a hospital getting, having to get a knee surgery. So if you're curious about what not to do and what to do in order to achieve your desired proposal with the desired ring according to the desired timeline that you have set in your head for yourself, then girl, you have to listen to me. I truly hope that you can learn from my mistakes and the ways I managed to correct them. I'm aware that there are many different customs and traditions when it comes to engagement rings and wedding rings, depending on which country you live in, uh, what culture or background you're from. Uh, in my particular universe, in my reality, this is how I always sort of imagined or, or thought that how it works, is um, the guy proposes to a woman with a ring and like in my reality again it doesn't have to be true and now I've been a bit more educated and I know it's not how it's supposed to be but this is how I always thought is the guy proposes to a woman with a ring which is not like a separate engagement ring uh, but just it, it's actually the ring that they are gonna be wearing as a wedding ring so for me there has never been like a separation between rings now I know that there should be or they're supposed to be like an engagement ring and then there's the wedding ring that, you know, the couple uh, both have, but the engagement ring is just only for the women. Um, and so, okay, so in my reality, it was like, there's one ring which he proposes with, and he puts it on there, or we put it on the left hand. And during the wedding or the marriage ceremony, we put it on the right for both of us, you know, because he has his own and I have my own, and then that's what we're gonna be wearing. And, um, uh, if you watch my introduction video, you know that I've been uh, married for a couple of years. We've been together for eight years and then married three years. So this was actually my longest ever relationship. Also, it was the best. And uh, when we got to, you know, like year two, I mean, I started to feel this anxiety inside that, hey, it's really time. It's really time to, for the guy to uh, propose to me. I never really been uh, a big fan of getting married. Uh, I think I just never really liked the whole idea of having a huge ceremony and having to dance with, I don't know, hundreds of people. I'm also, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> and then also just the whole white dress and it's just, it's so not me. But I always wanted to be engaged because I, I think that engagement is this huge commitment to, I mean, for a guy from a guy point of view. It doesn't have to be, okay? It doesn't have to mean the same thing to you, but what I'm saying is I always thought that for a guy to, you know, put the time, the energy, the money, the commitment into looking for a ring and, you know, making that decision that, okay, I'm just gonna look for the perfect time where I'm just gonna get on my knees and propose to this woman because this is a woman I wanna get married to. Uh, so I, I always felt that it's, it's something big. It's the next big step in a relationship to make it uh, more committed and serious and you know just putting it to a next level so I've been kind of like desperately waiting for it and I was giving out signs to my um, then boyfriend about you know what kind of style I like what kind of ring I'd love to wear what what colors I prefer because you know back in those days I actually hated the color of gold like yellow uh, so I was like more into silvery or like white gold. So I was like trying to give him hints and you know sneaking in some wedding catalogs where I could just point out certain rings that I would prefer to wear. 
But anyhow, uh, in this video, I'm going to tell you how this whole thing came together um, and because it wasn't that easy and uh, and also I, I'm going to share with you how I manifested my ideal, my perfect, my dream ring. Okay, so this is the ring. Tiny bit yellowish now because of the oxidization or whatever but this is not the ring that I got proposed to with back in those days I wasn't like a conscious uh, practitioner of the law of attraction so I mean the more anxious I was about is he going to propose or is he not Maybe it's a sign that I should leave. Shall I go? Shall I leave? Shall I go? Shall I leave? Like I was seriously contemplating if I should just leave. And I know it's very silly because deep in my heart, I knew that the relationship was good. It was working. Um, and and he was giving all of himself into the relationship as well. So I like, I didn't really have any reason to leave, but this is just my, this is just an issue that I have that whenever something doesn't go the way I want it, I leave. It's not good, I know. And um, I think the more anxious and the more stressed out I was about this uh, whole proposing not happening, not happening according to the timeline that I was imagining or desiring, the more it was not happening. Okay, I actually have to interrupt myself here because I want to make sure that you understand because this is how you're going to learn from it. So even though my desire, my wish was to get proposed to, I wasn't focusing or visualizing on the proposal itself. What I was giving energy and focus to was the fact that it was not happening. So I had all this negative energy um, coming out of me, sending it out to the universe with uh, the information, I am not being proposed to, I'm not being proposed to, and, and it's upsetting to me, and I'm not being proposed to. So this was the information, or, or this was the energy that I was sending out. So of course, this was the energy that I was getting back. So basically, this is how you can say that the universe orchestrated things around me in order to match my energy, my vibration, in order to match the reality that I was living in my head and I was living emotionally. So if you really want your guy to propose to you, what you have to do is no matter what is happening around you, don't observe reality, create it for yourself. So um, during meditation or, or during traveling on a bus or whenever you have a couple of minutes during the day or before you go to sleep, just create this inner movie in your head of the ideal proposal with the ideal ring and you know the whole ideal circumstances and see see it as something that has already happened and how happy you are about it and how perfect the whole thing is the reality is he already bought the ring he told me later on that he was carrying it with himself but he never really found the time uh, or the vibe to actually propose to me so and i think it's all due to my negative energy about it i was the one who was pushing this whole event away from happening uh, and then when it happened there was nothing romantic about it unfortunately it wasn't the way that i always imagined or hoped for i think we were just sitting in a car i think it was me actually driving and then he was sitting next to me and he just said uh, so shall we get married do you want to get married something like that something along those lines and it, it was a bit of a disappointment and then also the ring that he got to me or he gave me boy that was the ugliest shit i've ever seen <laughs> and i'm really sorry to say this i'm not embarrassed about my opinion but this is true like it just it had nothing to do with what i imagined in my head and it had nothing to do with all the hints that i was giving to him about what i would like to get it was really ugly and I think it had two colors and um, and one of the color was like yellow gold, exactly the color that I was uh, hoping not to get. It was very disappointing to be honest, because I thought I did such a good job, you know, giving him all the hints. 
But before that, I also wanted to tell you that, you know, all this inner emotional struggle in me and thinking like, shall I go? Should I stay? Should I go? Should I stay? Is it just wasting my time? Or is it something that's going to be long term? Should I go? Should I stay? Um, I remember one evening I was just, I, I came home very late because I had, I had an evening or a night shift job and I was just sitting in the car, didn't want to go upstairs and I said, please universe, send me a sign, shall I go or shall I stay? And then the next day we had some silly argument and in the midst of the argument I, I turned or I stabbed somehow strangely and bang an accident happened I actually heard it inside and I actually got into a shock state because of the pain and because of what happened to my left knee and then my, my knee got swollen like straight away and I had so much pain I couldn't I could, couldn't stand on it and later on you know when we went to the emergency we found out that um, the ligament and the meniscus in my knee got torn uh, really badly. Um, so basically I took it as an answer, you know, to my question, like, shall I go? Shall I stay? I couldn't fucking go anywhere for the next six months. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to get into the details how healthcare is in Sweden, but um, because of how it is, um, I was I wasn't getting any treatment apart from physical therapy for my knee and it didn't help because uh, you know they wanted you know to strengthen my knee up and all the stuff but it just because I couldn't walk I couldn't do anything it was my, my whole leg was just losing all the muscle uh, mass and also it was just excruciating pain and all the stuff but you know Swedish version of uh, helping any kind of disease or illness is just to give you Ivadon to take the pain away. <laughs> but anyhow, later on, you know, six months later, I went to see a specialist and the specialist said, we got to get you into surgery straight away, like tomorrow. And then, you know, they fixed all the stuff. But back to the uh, original story. So I got the answer to my question. I mean, this is how I actually understood the answer. Um, stay. So I stayed and um, and then not long after he proposed to me with the ring that was a huge disappointment. <laughs> but what happened? The next day, I lost the ring. <laughs> I went to solarium, took it off, put it on the side of the sun bed. And then when I got up, I forgot about it. And then when I left, left at the, the tanning place, that's when I was like, oh shit, my ring. So I went back and it wasn't there anymore. And it was so embarrassing, like you can imagine, you know, getting, like doing all these tantrums and all these fuss and everything about, you know, over the fact that he's not proposing and then he's proposing and then I get the ring and then I lose the ring the next day. It was huge, hugely embarrassing for me. Uh, but that's what happened and uh, it actually happened for the better because after that we were like okay so now I'm gonna get the chance to actually design the ring for myself the ring that I always wanted to have because I had this mental picture in my head of a ring that I wanted to get and <laughs> and now finally I got the chance to do that right so even though uh, I wasn't able to sort of influence someone else's uh, decision when it came to picking the right or the perfect looking looking ring because uh, you know everyone has free will and whatever he, he chose the ring that he chose but things happened I believe things happened in a way also according to law of attraction f to allow me to have a ring that I truly wanted to have and um, so I actually designed something and I designed, you know, this, like, it's, it's nothing crazy special or anything, but I just, I just wanted something like this. And then we went to um, this, uh, this jewelry store to give them our idea and get it done, get it made by them. 
But first of all, we got this price offer, right? And the kind of money that they were asking for was really, really over our budget back then. It was really over our budget. So, you know, we just left the store. We went to other stores as well, just getting, getting price ideas. And the more store we went to, the crazier prices we got. I think only because we used the magic word uh, wedding ring. <laughs> so everything started like you know, from double the price as they would normally cost you. And um, then another miracle or a magical thing happened because back in those days, um, we took a loan, a mortgage to buy a flat. But because we were not eligible to get uh, a normal mortgage you know with a normal interest rate from a regular bank because our salary were just not re really reaching the level that would have made us eligible we had to go to this um, other company who were just giving away mortgages like very easily freely you just call them up you just told them all the figures that they asked you didn't really have to show anything and then they just sent you the money and that's it but the interest rate was like crazy high like crazy high and, um, um, but then we knew it in our head that, you know, we have to do our best to bring our mortgage to our regular bank. Um, and we had these goals, you know, set in our head. We knew how much money we need to earn in order to achieve that level. And we did, I think within a couple of months, we both got a well-paying job and uh, our bank has approved us so we managed to take our loan to the regular bank and that cut our uh, monthly cost down to half of the original cost you know with all the interest rate and everything uh, and but that's not it because we were able to do this transition within a year this um, this company who gave us the initial mortgage said that they're gonna give us some money back. So they paid us something like 35,000 Swedish crown, which is about 3,500 uh, euros. And they just sent that money to us. And it was, it was a surprise and it was, um, it was a sign for us that, hey, okay, so it means that finally we can afford to go back to the jewelry store and order the ring that we wanted to. So the whole thing just came together. You, you see, it was all about focusing on what we wanted. And also I wanted to tell you what happens when you're focusing on the negative stuff. Even if you focus on the negative stuff and you get the negative shit, which is um, the event that you desire not happening because you're only giving energy to the event not happening, right? You can still make a comeback from it by changing your focus and, and, and thinking of what you truly desire. And then also with the ugly ring, you can, you can keep your focus and say, but this is the ring I imagine for myself and things are going to happen. I'm not, lose, I'm not saying that you're also going to lose your ring, hopefully not. But if that's the only solution for you to get there, that can also happen. I mean, the universe, the universe always finds like interesting, funny, inspiring ways to orchestrate things according to your desires or according to the energy that you put out there. Okay, so just to sum it up and give you all the conclusions or the lessons that you could take away from this uh, story of mine is, first of all, do not sabotage an event by focusing on it not happening. If you want your boyfriend to propose to you, then focus on visualizing your boyfriend proposing to you or visualize that it, it has already happened. So already have this feeling inside that you are engaged. Number two, if he proposes with an ugly ring, don't worry, you can always lose it. Number three, if you ask for a sign from the universe, make sure that you are gentle. Make sure that uh, you have the right kind of energy when asking the question because your answer is going to come back with the energy that you were asking the question with so for me i was asking the question while feeling really angry and frustrated and that's how my answer came you know the answer as the knee injury which really left me angry and frustrated and the last and the fourth lesson 
is if you can't afford something, for example, the ideal ring or the wedding itself, just, you know, have that exact figure in your mind about the money, the kind of money that you need. Write it down and both of you start focusing on having that kind of money, just seeing it arriving to you. You don't have to think about how it's going to come or where it's going to come from. That's not your job to figure out. Okay. Your job is just to know what you need, what you want, and then the universe will find ways to bring it to you. Don't worry. It will come. It has to law of attraction. Good luck and send me your marriage proposal videos or photos. If you want a more intimate content and daily communication, please go and join my Facebook group called Kinga Kramer and Friends.